Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Um, no doubt most of you, uh, if not all of you, are looking forward to the Stanionis Ortiz fight at the weekend. Big welterweight matchup. But there's another one on. There's another welterweight matchup we shouldn't overlook because it could be a tear up as well. We might be having a double header this weekend, uh, who were misses. Um, yeah, Jerron Ennis, Boots Ennis, takes on Royman Villa. And you know about Ennis, you know, he's a very, very big welterweight, uh, much touted amongst uh, those in the industry, 26 years of age, 5 foot 10, a big lump of a welter, 30 wins, 27 KOs, no defeats, no draws. And um, he, actually, he's, he's currently the IBF interim champ, whatever that means, I don't really care about that, but I'll mention it anyway. Um, and he's a knockout artist, as you can tell from his record. But in his last um, fight against uh, Karen, oh, how do you pronounce this guy's name? Chukadzian? Chukadzian, that's how you pronounce it, isn't it? Um, a guy who came in with a, a 21 and 1 record, he went the distance, which was surprising to me anyway. Um, and Chukadzian, uh, he fought better than I thought he would, but at the same time, I mean, he, he he lost, I think he was whitewashed actually, but I thought he'd get knocked out in three rounds or something like that. But So he, he had a bit more durability, but there's no way on earth he could survive, um, he could exchange with Ennis, and he didn't. He just sort of fiddled his way through the rounds, managed to get to the final bell, and Ennis won every round, um, unsurprisingly. Uh, now, you, you could say, well, you know, those 12 rounds, getting them, them under the belt is good for Ennis. Yeah, but it... Twelve. They got to be twelve hard rounds. They got to be twelve rounds where you're really, you know, having to answer a few questions. And Chukadzian uh, did not do that. He, he, he was there to go the distance. Ennis went the distance. But you, you can fight thirty rounds if you're doing it at your pace in your way. Someone has got to put it on you and and make you fight in a way that that you're not comfortable. And then the rounds are valuable. Okay, now this is that's not to say that I'm knocking Ennis, I'm not. It's just that those 12 rounds uh, came after a lot of knockouts, a lot of early knockouts. Um, Castillo Clayton went out in two rounds. We had um, Thomas Delorme went out in one. Um, Lip Lipinets, Sergei Lipinets, I think was six. Uh, Chris Van Heerden was a no contest. Um, and if you, but if you go back, to say, let's say 2020. In 2020, um, Boots had, I think, three fights. Was it, might have even been four. I think it was three. Uh, but since then, he's only fought four times. So his progress slowed, especially when you consider that, like, you know, the one round against Delorme, or uh, two rounds against Clayton. I mean, it's not much work, is it? But nevertheless, you know, I'm not knocking Ennis. He's got a lot of skills. He's obviously got a big punch. Uh, he is the guy who, if you take Crawford and Spence out of the equation, you're going to be thinking, well, he's he's the main man or potentially the main man. Um, I think most people would say he's third in, in the pecking order. Um, and just, just a very good fighter with underrated skills because he actually does have a good jab. and He's an orthodox fighter, good jab, um, decent feet. But questions haven't yet been asked of him. Um, so, okay, you know, we, we can only beat what's in front of you and so on. So that brings us to Roy Manvia. And Villa is, um, he's 26 wins with 24 KOs. So this guy can bang a bit as well. One defeat, which was on points. That was back in 2019 uh, over in Mexico. I think the guy's name was Marcus Villasano. There was a fighter in the eight in the nineties, eighties and nineties called Marcus Villasano, who was a real tough nut. Um, had a lot of real wars. Obviously, this is a different guy. Um, but in the last four years, he's been undefeated. He's been racking up, like I say, those knockouts. You know, twenty-four knockout wins in twenty-six. Twenty-six uh, wins. Uh, he's thirty years of age now. He's from uh, Colombia, and he's an orthodox fighter. Now, if you've if you've seen Roy Manvia, it was probably against Rashidi Ellis because that that was the that was the fight where he really made a name for himself. Already broke out of of being a you know um, a fighter who wasn't highly thought of, was considered good, but you know probably not going to reach the heights, the absolute elite heights. 
Um, and there's a reason for that. And that reason is that Roy Manvia has one thing on his mind, and that is that he's going to knock you out. And he comes forward throwing extremely wide punches, um, winging punches, ex extreme power on all of them. He's, he, he very rarely jabs. I mean, I, I've seen a handful of his fights. I, don't, I haven't seen him jab that much. He tends to walk in the front door. There's nothing scientific. There's nothing cultured about what he does. Um, but he, he wants to have a row with you. He wants to throw leather and it's going to be kill or be killed and against Rashidi Ellis he, he had the same I mean Ellis was one of those guys came in undefeated 24 nil at the time and um, he I never felt that confident with Ellis I mean he's I think he's 30 now um, he'd beaten he had 15 KOs in in his 24 wins but I didn't I wasn't that taken with him he was one of those movers lots of flash and dash and I was I, with those guys, those that move a lot, fire lots of quick combinations that are really just firing punches for the sake of it. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, I always think, well, what is there any substance behind all this flash, behind all this movement? Or are you going to get taken out at the moment you meet some someone who can take your punch, who is refusing to, you know, just sort of swats the flies that are coming at them and come straight at you and then put some real, real punches on you? Are you going to be able... Uh, to show anything, to show any any durability, a good engine and so on. Well, against Roy Manvia, Ellis did show uh, his usual flash and dash, but he lost a majority decision. And this is the fight that got Villa, that made Villa um, a viable opponent, I think, for Ellis. Um, Villa stalked and stalked and stalked. Ellis was winning rounds by, you know, sort of pot-shotting and popping and, again, moving. But in the second half of the fight, Villa got closer and closer. And uh, it was a close fight. Don't get me wrong, it was a close fight. But uh, in the final round, Villa really did catch up with Ellis and floored him heavily with a left hook. That was not far into the round. And then right at the death of the very final seconds of the fight, he floored Ellis again on the ropes. Um, and so that would be probably a 10-7 ten, ten round. Uh, and he, he he got a majority decision. Uh, very close fight, though. You know, if you said Ellis's early work got him the fight, I wouldn't argue too strongly with you. But it's not a style that I've, I've got a great deal of faith in. Uh, I think Ellis was to some degree exposed, as I suspected he would be before he fought Villa. To, Villa, to his credit, showed a lot of um, uh, determination, motivation, fortitude he wasn't put off by Ellis's movement he wasn't put off by the fact that Ellis was landing punches and winning rounds early he just went straight straight at him as he always does stalk 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 total pressure fighter huge winging punches throws the occasional uppercut which is good um throws body punches occasionally I like to see him throw more body punches a lot of his stuff is head hunting but Villa is a threat for anyone who's a sort of B B certainly a B B level fighter, but a B plus fighter. He can he can he beat Ellis, so yeah, he, he can fight. He can fight, and he's a handful, a real handful, a real durable, tough handful. The problem is with Jaron Ellis is Jaron Ellis uh, Ennis, excuse me, not Ellis, Ennis is a uh, big, powerful welterweight who hits like a truck, and if you're going to come straight at him, um, Ennis has got something waiting for you, and. It, Ennis's variety of punches is very, very good. And unlike Villa, he fires very precise punches. He picks the right punches for the right moments, the right split seconds. Um, and he'll tag you and he'll hurt you. And he'll put you off coming in that front door. And, you know, he'll take the sting out of you. He'll take the durability, the stamina out of you. This is a 12-round fight. Ennis and Villa is a 12-round fight. So I, I really see only one winner, and that is... Jaron boots Ennis, and the question is, when will he stop Via? I think Via's as game as hell. I don't think he'll quit. You can make the argument that he's had things his own way, but against Rashidi Ennis, uh, get, get these words right. Uh, against, uh, yeah, against Rashidi um, Ellis. I'm getting the Ennis and the Ellis mixed up. He uh, he did show that he can't be put off by losing rounds and by someone out slicking him. Um, Ennis has got, I think he's got better skills than Ellis, but uh, I, he's also got an immense amount of, or a very considerable amount of power. So I see 
Via inevitably coming straight at Ennis. I see Ennis out boxing him, popping him, moving, so on and so forth. Um, and I think there's only one winner, to be honest. I see him basically beating up Via and stopping him. When... I'm sort of thinking six, seven, eight, may, maybe a bit longer, maybe ten. I always like to pick around just for the hell of it, but this is a difficult one. Um, I'll go with I, I think Via might might have a bit of durability and won't quit so I'm going to go with Ennis knocking out Via in 10 rounds uh, and it might be a corner retirement it might be the ref stepping in but that's my pick Ennis to win this fight in 10 rounds by stoppage and it, for it to be a dominant performance a dominant performance now it could it could be I mean I see Ennis winning by knockout but it could be first three rounds I mean this is the thing Via's face first offense just leaves him open and maybe if if he Ennis can't get rid of him early he'll start boxing a bit in the middle rounds and then come on strong down the stretch i think that's probably what will happen actually but i could be wrong i could be wrong i mean you know i'm going with the 10th round for jaron uh, ennis to knock out royman via um give me your opinions leave your comments below and of course subscribe if you know hit the subscribe button that takes a second, doesn't do any harm, hit the subscribe button, spread the word about Joe Stunner Boxing, hit the like button as well on the video if you liked it, because that helps us out as well, and I look forward to reading your comments, and of course I'll answer, uh, but yeah, until then, enjoy your day, bye for now.